Pastors, theology students, and congregation members who are attending Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter, it is nice to meet you. My name is Park Kun Tae from Shincheonji Church of Jesus, and I'll be your host today. I would like to thank everyone who's attending Shincheonji Online Seminar, which is being broadcast to the whole world. This current seminar teaches what every believer from around the world must know in order to keep the new covenant Jesus gave us. I pray and wish that all of you who are participating in this seminar from around the world to receive great perception and grace from God. First, let us offer up a prayer of gratitude and glorify God together with the United Heart for giving us the Word of Life. Our Father God, we truly thank you. We offer up all glory and thanks to you for allowing us to be one in the truth through the testimony and the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter so we can understand the true will of God in Jesus and walk on the path to the kingdom of heaven you laid out for us. Many believers from around the world have gathered to come before your word, so please guide us so that we can have a time filled with hope and grace with the word that is like the precious water of life. Please pour your Holy Spirit upon the lips of the instructor who will be sharing your word today, and let everyone who hears the testimony clearly perceive the kingdom of heaven. Please be with us from the beginning to the end of this time. And we earnestly desire that your limitless grace and love will fill up every family member on this earth. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who is our life. Amen. Now, it is the most important time of the seminar today, which is to hear the Word of Life. Today's topic is Intermediate Lesson 16, The Place Jesus Has Prepared, and the Spirit of Truth, the Counselor. Do you know the main two promises Jesus gave us as He left 2,000 years ago? Today's seminar will give you the testimony on these two promises that all of us must know. Please seal them deeply in your hearts and understand clearly. And I hope all of you will keep those promises and receive God's blessings. We'll welcome up Instructor Kim Jin Hun from Andrew Tribe, who will be testifying to God's Word today. Pastors, theology students, and congregation members all over the world whose hope is in heaven and eternal life, it is nice to meet you. My name is Kim Jin Hoon, the head instructor of Kim Church in Andrew Tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. I wanted to express a warm welcome to everyone who attended the Shincheonji Online Seminar for the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter. Today, the words I will be testifying to is an intermediate lesson titled, The Place Jesus Has Prepared and the Spirit of Truth, the Counselor. The main reference is John chapter 14 and John chapter 16. There may be some pastors that have read the Bible a lot that may know the content regarding the place Jesus has prepared and the Spirit of Truth, the Counselor, and there may be some that don't know very well. However, I hope that you will listen to my lecture and learn the answers to God's will together during this time. Now, let's first take a look 
at the two main promises that Jesus made when He left in John chapter 14. About 2,000 years ago, Jesus, who came at the first coming, said in John chapter 14 that He would go and prepare a place and promised the disciples that He would come back again when He prepared that place. And as Jesus left, He promised to send the Spirit of Truth, the Counselor. Because Jesus left, He said that He would send another counselor. This is a prophecy that will be fulfilled 2,000 years later, which is today, at the time of the Second Coming. The purpose of this prophecy was recorded, as in John chapter 14, 29, is that when the words of prophecy fulfill, it is to see and believe what has been fulfilled. Now, we will take a look at the place Jesus prepared. But first, let's read the words of John chapter 14, verses 2 and 3 together. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. The first promise Jesus made when He left was that He was going to prepare a place for the saints to live. If so, who was this place really prepared for? If you look at John chapter 14, verse 23, He went to go prepare a place for those who keep the commands of Jesus, that is, the saints who keep the new covenant. If so, where is the place Jesus went to go prepare? It says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, Your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We will first take a look at what the place prepared that is fulfilled in heaven is like. Let's read the words of Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 to 3 together. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and He will live with them. They will be His people, and God Himself will be with them and be their God. The place that Jesus prepared and comes to is the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from heaven in Revelation chapter 21. Since Jesus went to heaven and prepared a place, calling it New Jerusalem, we can see the word new, right? Then, why is it called New Jerusalem? This is not the time of Moses, and it is not of old, that is, the Old Testament, but it is new. When you look at Revelation chapter 21, the names of the twelve apostles are written on the wall of the city foundation of the holy city, New Jerusalem. Jesus made the New Jerusalem by using the twelve disciples as the foundation. Because the twelve disciples are in spirit and not the flesh, the new Jerusalem that Jesus created is a spiritual organization, the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual realm. Then, Jesus clearly promised that He would come again when that place was prepared. Then, where will He come to? In Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, it says, As it will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
then that place where that prophecy is fulfilled will become the reality of where that prepared place will come down to, right? To understand this, we saw in Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 to 3, the holy city, New Jerusalem, comes down out of heaven from God, and it says that the dwelling of God is with men. The place where this holy city, New Jerusalem, comes down upon is the new heaven and new earth recorded in Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. Also, this new heaven and new earth are the 12 tribes of Shintonji created according to the promise in Revelation chapter 7. This will become the 12 tribes of Shintonji that are recreated by harvesting and sealing those born of God's seed in Revelation chapter 7 after the first heaven and first earth are judged and come to an end in Revelation chapter 6. At the time of the second coming, the twelve tribes are created on this earth, and God and the kingdom of heaven come down. This new heaven and new earth, the twelve tribes of Shintonji, will become the place where Jesus had prepared comes down upon. That is why it is as if it was stamped like a copy, that it is the same as it is in heaven made here on earth, and becomes one. The kingdom of heaven in the spiritual realm, the holy city New Jerusalem, comes down upon the twelve tribes and becomes one. Then, isn't belonging to the twelve tribes the same as entering the kingdom of heaven? I hope that all of you will find and belong to the twelve tribes of the kingdom of heaven on this earth as it is in heaven and become those who can fulfill the hope of the kingdom of heaven. Also, the twelve tribes as seen in Revelation chapter 7 are the sealed 144,000 and the name of God and Jesus are recorded on their foreheads as seen in Revelation chapter 14 and are recorded as the harvested first fruits. Then, where is the place they are gathered? That place is Mount Zion in Revelation chapter 14. As we see in Revelation chapter 14, verses 1 to 3, Jesus is standing on Mount Zion, and with him, are the 144,000, and they sing a new song before the throne. We can know well that the throne of God is at Zion. In other words, we can know that the throne of God, the spiritual realm of heaven, the holy city New Jerusalem comes down upon Mount Zion. God left the places where they became mere flesh, but is one with the 144,000 who are sealed with God's seal on Mount Zion. The book of Revelation that God fulfills and the place where God will come is where the sealed 12 tribes are at in Revelation chapter 7 and Revelation chapter 14. Therefore, this will be the place in John chapter 14 where the place that has been prepared will come down upon. Also, in Matthew chapter 25, it is promised that there will be those who inherit the kingdom prepared since the creation of the world when Jesus returns. Then, let's read Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 to 34 together to see who will inherit this. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on His right, and the goats on His left. Then the King will say to those on His right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. 
Just as we read, those who are blessed and will inherit the kingdom prepared will be the sheep like believers who are on the right side of God. The prepared kingdom to inherit will be the place he went to prepare in John chapter 14. And Jesus went to prepare this place for these people, right? Then, what are the qualifications to enter the kingdom of heaven where the place that has been prepared will come? First, we must act according to God's will, and we must be born again of water and the Holy Spirit. Also, we must be born of God's seed, be harvested and sealed, and belong to the twelve tribes of God's kingdom. Also, their names must be recorded in the Book of Life of the Twelve Tribes of God's Kingdom and wash their robes, the clothes of their heart, with the words of Revelation as clear as crystal. They can only enter the Holy City, the Kingdom of Heaven. Also, in Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 to 19, it is written that if you add or subtract from the New Covenant, Revelation, you will not be able to enter the Kingdom of Heaven. If you love God and hope for the Kingdom of Heaven, you must not say that you love only with words, but must not add or subtract from the New Covenant, believe in the reality of the fulfillment, and be those who have actions of keeping the New Covenant. Pastors, theology students, and congregation members all over the world, I really pray in the name of Jesus that all of you will have the qualifications to enter the kingdom of heaven and become the sheep-like believers who can live together at the place that the Bible has promised. Then, the second main point of John chapter 14 is that Jesus promised to send the Spirit of Truth, the Counselor, after He left. Now, let's take a look at the Spirit of Truth, the Counselor that Jesus promised. First, if we look at the meaning of Counselor, the word used here in Chinese characters means a teacher who protects God's people with grace, using characters that represent protection, grace, and teacher. To understand this more accurately, let's read 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 together. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, it says Jesus is an advocate. We can see that Jesus is a counselor, the advocate of God who speaks on His behalf. Therefore, Jesus is God's advocate, and the Counselor. Then, whose words did Jesus preach? In John chapter 14, verse 24, Jesus said, These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father. About 2,000 years ago, Jesus came with the duty of the Counselor the duty to testify the Word of God on His behalf as an advocate. It is recorded in Luke chapter 1, verse 17, At the time of the first coming, John the Baptist came in the spirit and power of Elijah. The spirit of Elijah came upon John the Baptist and did the work of the duty of Elijah. Just as John the Baptist came in the spirit and power of Elijah, then whose name did Jesus come in? Yes, he came in the name of God, right? To understand this, if you look at John chapter 5, verse 43, it is recorded that Jesus came in God's name. Then, to say that He came in the name of God means that Jesus was sent by God 
And his duty was to preach the word of God, right? In other words, at the time of the first coming, Jesus is an advocate who came to preach the word of God on his behalf. Therefore, as written in John chapter 13, verse 20, to accept Jesus at the time of the first coming is to accept God. And to not accept Jesus was the same as not accepting God. Also, John chapter 15, verse 23 says that he who hates Jesus hates God as well. Those who did not accept Jesus at the time and persecuted him are the same as those who persecuted God. In this way, the words of the shepherd who testifies on behalf are the words of God. I hope that all of you can receive life by listening to the word that is testified on behalf that was sent by God and obey it. So far, we have looked at the content of Jesus the Counselor at the first coming. Now, we are going to learn about the another counselor that Jesus promised to send at the second coming. Since this is a very important topic in today's lesson, I hope you will pay attention and listen carefully. Now, let's read together the explanation of the counselor in John chapter 14, verses 16 to 17. And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept Him, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. But you know Him, for He lives with you and will be in you. As seen in John chapter 14, verse 16, Jesus said that he will send another counselor. But why did he say another counselor instead of just saying counselor? The reason for this is because Jesus, the counselor of the first coming, left, and so he promised to send us another counselor. He also said that it is a spirit of truth. And that is because God's word is truth. So we can know well that it is a spirit that will bring the word of truth. However, it's not going to be a spirit that you can't see that will be teaching the word of truth to people, right? As John chapter 14, verse 17 says, the spirit of counselor will be inside of you. In other words, dwell inside a person. Therefore, the logic of testifying on behalf is not the spirit directly conveying it to the people, but Jesus promised that the spirit of truth will be inside a person and will testify on behalf. So, the one who testifies on behalf, the counselor, we can see there is a counselor in the spirit and a counselor in the flesh. We can know that the counselor in the flesh is a flesh that testifies on behalf. The counselor in the spirit is a spirit of truth that testifies to the word of God. Also, the flesh that the spirit of truth is one with is the counselor in the flesh as a chosen shepherd of God, receiving the word from the counselor in the spirit and testifies on behalf to the saints and is a messenger that Jesus has sent to the churches. This is just like a bottle of water that becomes a water bottle and a bottle of wine that becomes a wine bottle. So the spirit of counselor inside that person is the shepherd, that messenger that Jesus has sent. At the time of the first coming, the Spirit of God was one with the promised shepherd, Jesus. And just like the Old Testament prophecies and fulfillment were testified, even today at the time of the second coming, 
The Spirit of Truth enters the promised shepherd of the New Testament and testifies to the prophecy and fulfillment of Revelation. Pastors, theology students, and congregation members all over the world, when you hear these words, when will these words be fulfilled? And what does this have to do with me? Shouldn't we think about this at least once? Just as God said that Jesus was a counselor, the one who testifies on behalf, the advocate, today, the shepherd who Jesus sent, the spirit of truth to be one with, is the one that testifies on behalf. He is the counselor in the flesh, the promised shepherd of the New Testament. Then, who is the advocate we must find? Among the things we learn today, this content is very important. In this era that we are living in, God, Jesus, and the one who testifies on behalf, the advocate, he is a messenger who comes in Jesus' name promised in John chapter 14, verse 26 today. To understand this, let's read John chapter 14, verse 26 together. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Just as Jesus came in the name of the Father, the another counselor in John chapter 14, verse 26, promises to come in the name of Jesus to teach all things and remind all the things Jesus said. The fact that another counselor came in the name of Jesus means that he was sent from Jesus. Then, what is the work and testimony that the another counselor who was sent in the name of Jesus do? To understand this, we first saw in John chapter 16, verses 13 to 15, the counselor will guide into all truth. Secondly, he will not speak on his own. He will only speak what he hears and said that he will teach us things to come with the things that belongs to Jesus. Therefore, the another counselor came in the name of Jesus. He is not Jesus. But with the duty of testifying the words of Jesus, he is the shepherd, the advocate who testifies on behalf. Also, when the another counselor comes, it is the end times where the prophecies of the Bible will be fulfilled. Aren't you curious what will take place at that time? To understand this, if you look at John chapter 16, verse 25, he said that, when the another counselor comes, he will not speak figuratively or in parables, but will speak plainly about the fulfillment. Today, when the book of Revelation is fulfilled, the another counselor will testify to the fulfillment that God and Jesus promised. And as he testifies on behalf, I hope that we can all become the true believers who listen and keep the words of the counselor that Jesus has promised. Now, let's take a closer look at the another counselor promised in the book of Revelation in the New Testament, that is, New John, the one who testifies on behalf of Jesus. First, the name New John refers to a shepherd promised to come in the position of John at the time of Revelation's fulfillment. To understand this, Let's read Revelation chapter 1, verses 1 to 2 together. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw, that is, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. As we saw in Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, 
In order for God to show the servants what must soon take place, He made it known by sending His angel to His servant John. This is a process by which the revelation is conveyed. To take a closer look at this, in Revelation chapter 5, verse 1, the scroll sealed with seven seals was in God's right hand, which is the word of revelation where God's secrets are recorded. The time has come today to open the scroll sealed with seven seals in God's right hand. Jesus takes it and opens each of the seven seals in Revelation chapter 6 and Revelation chapter 8. He fulfills all the prophecies written in the book. And the open scroll in Revelation chapter 10 is fed to new John through the angel. Also, after receiving the word, new John saw and testified to all the events of revelation that were fulfilled in the word. Therefore, when Jesus fulfills these prophecies, the one who directly saw and heard these things is just one person, which is new John, and the servants of God who received that testimony of the revelation are the twelve tribes in Revelation chapter 7, the 144,000 and the great multitude in white. It says in Revelation chapter 1 verse 2 that new John, who testifies on behalf of Jesus as an advocate, will testify to everything he saw that is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Therefore, the only one who sees, hears, and testifies to the reality of the fulfillment of the book of Revelation is New John, the messenger of Jesus who testifies on behalf of the advocate today at the second coming. Also, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 9 to 20, Jesus is one with new John, the one who overcomes, and through him sends a letter to the seven messengers of the seven churches in Revelation chapters 2 and 3, telling them to repent, fight, and overcome Satan's Nicolaitans. Today, when the book of Revelation is fulfilling, new John, who fought and overcame Satan's Nicolaitans, receives the promised blessings of the hidden manna, the white stone, the iron scepter to rule all nations, and the morning star. The shepherd who received the blessings promised in Revelation chapters 2 and 3 is the one who overcomes the promised shepherd. Isn't where the one who overcomes is at, the place where God, Jesus, the kingdom of heaven, and salvation is? Also, if we look at Revelation chapter 3, verse 12, it says that the name of God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down from heaven, and Jesus' new name will be recorded on the one who overcomes, new John. From this, we can see that God, the kingdom of heaven, and Jesus descend and are one with the one who overcomes, New John. And the one who went up to the spiritual realm of heaven in Revelation chapter 4 is New John. In Revelation chapter 12, New John fought with the blood of Jesus, which is the word of Jesus and the word of testimony, and became the one who overcomes. Also, if you look at Revelation chapter 22, verse 8, when Jesus fulfills all of the events of Revelation, the one who saw and heard those things beside him was New John. This New John is a messenger of Jesus who was sent to the churches as seen in Revelation chapter 22, verse 16. Therefore, New John is a messenger of Jesus. He doesn't speak his own words, but only testifies to what he has seen and heard. He testifies the words of Jesus on behalf, and hearing the words of the messenger that Jesus sent on behalf means listening to the words of God and Jesus. It is learning the revealed word of Jesus. 
For this reason, the promised shepherd of Shincheonji, who was sent as a messenger of Jesus, is testifying the overall events of Revelation, the prophecy and fulfillment as a last trumpet along with the 12 tribe leaders to all the Christian pastors in the world. Currently, pastors from all over the world are listening to this and are welcoming it. Many churches, denominations, and seminaries have signed MOUs with Shincheonji, and many places are inviting the lectures from Shincheonji. Isn't this clear proof that the, another counselor that Jesus promised, the Spirit of Truth, is with the promised shepherd of Shincheonji? If you want to meet God and Jesus today, we pray in the name of Jesus that you meet the one who overcomes the messenger that God and Jesus are with and hear the overall events of revelation, becoming the people who seek truth. Now, let's summarize what we heard today. Jesus said that he was going to prepare a place for the saints who keep the new covenant. That place that is prepared will be the holy city, New Jerusalem, the spiritual realm of heaven, and Revelation chapter 12, where Jesus built the 12 disciples as the foundation. And the place where God and the city of New Jerusalem comes down on this earth will become a new heaven and new earth where God's people will live. It is a place where we will dwell on this earth as it is in heaven, and it is a kingdom of heaven we must find. Also, the meaning of the counselor in John chapter 14 and John chapter 16 is a teacher who protects with grace. And his duty is to testify the word of God and Jesus on behalf. Also, at the time of the first coming, the messenger of God was Jesus. And at the time of the second coming, the messenger of God and Jesus is a promised shepherd that Jesus has chosen, the one who overcomes New John. Lastly, the kingdom of God that the messenger of Jesus has established is the new kingdom and new people, the 12 tribes of Shincheonji. The 12 tribes are those who are born of God's seed, harvested, and sealed, and is God's new kingdom that has been recreated as seen in Revelation chapter 7, Revelation chapter 14, and Revelation chapter 21. In the name of Jesus, we pray that pastors, theology students, and congregation members all over the world will find the promised shepherd who testifies on behalf and understand the meaning of the word, keep it, and receive all the promised blessings. Lastly, with the meaning of becoming one with God, Jesus, and the word, let's shout together. We are one inside of God and Jesus. We are one. We will come to an end with prayer. Father God, who is so holy, we sincerely thank you for sending the promised shepherd to this earth according to the promises in the Bible in these last days and for fulfilling your word of prophecy according to the promises in the Bible. We who were separated from you, our Father, because of our sins, we thank you so much for allowing us to be restored with the blood of Jesus and for fulfilling all your prophecies through the promised shepherd in this last era. Now, in order to restore the relationship that has been separated, you have testified to the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter. Please help the people all around the world to hear this word of revelation and come before the true God. The main reference for today was John chapter 14 and John chapter 16. And the counselor 
and another counselor was testified. We pray that all the pastors, theology students, and congregation members all over the world who heard this word today would listen and perceive the revelation of truth and become one with the word of truth. Through the seminars that will be continued even after this time, we pray that you would help the whole world to perceive and understand and let everyone become the true children of God. We give thanks and pray all of this in the name of Jesus, who is our Savior that atoned us for our sins. Amen. Thank you so much for listening until the end. The tree of life and the tree of good and evil clearly appear in the Bible. But it seems like the pastors around the world have not presented any clear explanations about them. It says in Genesis 3.22 that one will live forever if they were to eat the fruit of the tree of life. It also says in Genesis 2.17 that one who eats from the tree of good and evil will surely die. Isn't it crucial to understand this topic since life and death came from these two trees and two fruits? Just as you've seen in the video, our next seminar will be given under the title of Intermediate Lesson 17, The Reality of the Tree of Life and the Tree of Good and Evil. The seminar will start at the same time as it did today. So I hope all of you will come back and enter the Kingdom of Heaven together as it is our hope. Shincheonji Online Seminar Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter is being broadcast to the whole world in 24 different languages via the official YouTube channel of Shincheonji. The Parable and Revelation seminars we've conducted prior to this series have garnered much interest from pastors and seminaries from around the world. And we've been hearing the good news that they're wanting to become one in God by signing MOU with Shincheonji Church of Jesus. Shincheonji is open to anyone who loves God's Word. If you have any questions about today's lesson, or Shincheonji Church of Jesus, or our teachings, please call the number on the screen. We'll make sure to guide you kindly in detail. Thank you all the pastors, theology students, and congregation members who watched this seminar until the very end. Let us conclude today's program by offering up the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We sincerely thank you for being with us today as God's family.